Okay, so let's get started. Um, 11.05 right now on a Tuesday, 7th of April. So I'm doing my daily currency call. I start calling a currency call. Every day we'll talk about different currency pair. Um, Ho Soon there, you see the guy in a mask in the office. He has requested for an additional um, pair on Thursday. So Thursday, it's originally just the yen. Now we have yen and gold as well. Today, I'll be talking about the euro. So uh, while I'm getting started, you also want to be, I want you to be thinking about any questions you might have. Um, put it in the chat. We have guys there looking out for all your questions and then I'll answer them as I go through my analysis, guiding you through what um, I think is likely to happen, could happen, likely to happen for the euro. Okay, so let's get started. Let me just share my screen. All right, so looking at, this is the Euro chart on a one hour. Let's look at it on a bigger time frame right now. Um, in the recent months or last month, we saw huge volatility in the Euro. Um, we saw it, wait, let me just move this, this side so I can see better. We saw it shooting up a good 400, almost 500 over pips upwards before retracing back down the full move up and further down towards more than 300 over pips, 400 pips downwards and then back up again. And then now it's sitting at exactly where it was at the lowest point in February this year. So what we're seeing is there was a lot of volatility in the, in the Euro, mainly because um, one of the reasons was that they expected QE, they expected a cut of rates and QE, but that didn't really come through as traders expected. So uh, we saw a lot of movements before resuming to where it originally um, was in February. So looking at this, the overall, the bigger time frame kind of support resistance that I would draw, for sure I need a line there at 1066. That's the lowest point um, in March. And also if we scrolled back, it was the lowest point I think in since 2017. The highest point, although I have it here, it's probably a bit irrelevant at 1.14. Um, in between, we definitely need something. I'm thinking something around here at 1.08. So I'll just have these as the rough guidelines for now. Maybe 1.09, let's be a bit more specific. 1.09, I'll have this as the guidelines for now as my overall view of where the euro could be heading before I go into a smaller time frame. You guys know that I don't normally trade on the... Um, daily chart as well. So looking at the H4 now, what we see is that I'm quite happy with these lines, you know, a good 230 pips apart. This is a bit further, so we might need another one, uh, maybe somewhere there, a bit lower maybe. All right, so that's about 250, 260. This is about 230, 240. So I'm quite happy with my lines now. I remember that it's in a, basically an area. But what you notice is that for the past couple of days, the euro has been moving quite quietly. Nothing much has been happening in the euro. Um, at this point, we, the decision is whether it's squeezing to move higher or squeezing to move lower. Um, I'll actually put it to you now if you can go in the chat. I want, uh, we have about 14 of you here. I want to see your response do you think it's squeezing to move higher or squeezing to move lower i'll give you a minute to do that put it in the chat i'm not moving ahead if you don't answer so i got four person saying lower right now Five, six, <laughs> it's like an auction. So I have seven. Oh, Scott says higher. Robbie says higher. Kim Hong says higher. So now I've got six to three. 
All right. So looking at it, you know, most of you think it's going to go lower. Some of you think it's going to go higher. At this point now, we don't see where we don't see much triggers in terms of the euro. Um, let me just show you Forex Factory. I'll show you this. Can you see my Forex Factory page? Thumbs up if you can. Yep, okay. So Forex Factory, looking at it, no real euro news today. Um, a bit of news, but not super high important. Looking through the week, nothing much really happening. We have some policy meeting there, not going to do much. And on Thursday, Friday, we also have nothing much there. So at, for this week, I don't think that there's going to be much stimulus in terms of the fundamental side of things to drive the euro either significantly higher or significantly lower. Um, no real triggers apart from possible developments in the uh, virus situation, right? So let me just get back to the chart again. So I'm looking at this now. We see that the euro has been sitting quite quiet, um, going into the one hour time frame, you know, past one, two days, couple of days, it's really been sitting at that range of 108. So at that point, um, we could see a good, if it goes up, you know, we're likely to look at a bit of a 100 pip move upwards before a possible stalling at that point. Um, and then if it goes down 120 pips downwards before a possible stalling at that point. What would I be looking for right now? I'm actually looking for rather shorter term trade in the euro. Um, I'm either whether it moves upwards or downwards, you know, I think, let me zoom in a bit here. You know, I think it's going to be quite a good um, short term trading opportunity, not a long term trading opportunity because if I entered a, if it broke out of this range, it's a good 70 pip move upwards with a 50 pip stop. You know, trade that tight range there. That's why I've got my stripy shirt on. I see everything moving horizontal right now. Okay. Uh, if it goes downwards below this point, I see a, about a 60 something, 70 pip stop with a good 100 pip take profit. A good about 100 pip take profit. So I want you to try and think of euro or maintain your flexibility when you're trading the euro dollar um, in terms of whether it's going to go up or down because there is no real fundamental trigger. So at this point, you know, if you're going to be trading upwards to 1.09, we could look at it and it's quite a reasonable short term trade or short to medium term trade. If we're going to look at it downwards, we could look at it going towards 1.06 also with a good risk reward and a good short to medium term trade. At this point, um, I'll look, turn back to you guys. Do you have any questions about the Euro US at this point? Or is everyone lost? Agreed, Scott agrees, good. So I have three per thing saying they agree and then I'll move on. I will add in a different currency pair. Um, I'll add in a Euro pound today as a bonus for you guys who turned up or well, for everyone. Lewis is still digesting. All right. Anyone else? One more person to give me a feedback. Yes, Louis, what are you curious about? Yep. Um, okay, so Louis' question is when I mentioned short term trade, What's the time period I'm looking at, you know, an hour or three hours? I'll be looking at the one hour chart, 
but I'll be looking at a maybe a one or two day period where I'll be holding that trade. Okay. Um, as a side note, what I actually would recommend for most traders right now is your short term trade shouldn't be um, should it, should not be the couple of hours kind of trade. All right, at this point, if you're holding a trade for only a few hours, one, you, one, two things will happen. One is you might see little to no activity. We see that now, you know, prices are moving very quietly, not doing much. Either that or you see big volatility. You enter a trade expecting a short-term move. You pick, and with a short-term move, you're going to put your stop loss quite tight. So what will happen, what is likely to happen is you get stopped out before the price starts moving again, a, a few good big breakouts. So as this situation now, what I normally would recommend is to have short to medium term trades, I would say would be between one or two days, where I'll get into a trade now, think of it for tomorrow. Think of whether um, for the euro, whether it can go up a good 70 pips or down a good 100 pips, within a day or two days right so um you got to be a bit more flexible in terms of your holding period in terms of your strategy when the market changes because right now we see a lot more volatility because of what's happening in terms of the virus situation good question louis good question anyone else All right, so if there's no other questions, I'll move on to the Euro Pound. Euro Pound, because we're talking about Euro, so I want to touch on the Euro Pound as well. Uh, tomorrow, we're talking about the Pound, so we'll revisit the Euro Pound as well tomorrow. So at this point right now, the Euro Pound looks quite, on the daily chart, looks a little bit similar um, on the lesser volatility, lesser, lesser volatility, but similar to what happened with the euro, we saw a big upward move in March. It came back down, but not as significantly as the euro. So it hasn't gone back to where it started in February. It's halfway back down. So at this point, what's going to happen to what I see happening to the euro pound? Um, putting in my lines again at about 930, 0.936. My lower levels at 0 0.831, a very big range. So I'll definitely have something in the middle, which is probably about there at about looking at these points. So at about 0 0.875. So how I see it is the Euro pound on a daily chart is sitting on a rather strong support level. Um, a rather strong support level on a daily chart. I also know that my fast MACD looks like it's trying to cross upwards. Um, stochastic is still trying to go upwards. This is still trying to point lower. So with the Euro pound, for it to move higher, let me put this question out to all of you in the chat again. For the Euro pound to move higher, what needs to happen? What should happen to the Euro? And what should happen to the pound? I'll put that to you again. Should the, pound, should the Euro move higher or lower? And should a pound move higher or lower? Euro to strengthen, pound to weaken. Euro to strengthen, pound to weaken. Good. Fantastic. So you guys got a good idea of what, what happens with the cross pairs. All right. So as we spoke about in terms of the euro, just then we said that, hey, euro might go up, might go down, no real triggers at this point. And even if it does go up or down, it's quite a limited upside or downside. We saw a maximum of 70 to 100 pips move um, either upward or downward. So it will fall into the pound, whether the pound is going to move significantly lower. If the pound moves significantly lower, we could see the euro pound shooting upward. 
at this point, you know, if I start talking about a pound, then I have nothing else to talk about tomorrow. So, Lewis, your question, does Boris Johnson being in critical condition affect the pound? I will answer that tomorrow. If I don't answer that tomorrow, remind me to answer that tomorrow. Um, but then, at this point, based on the euro alone, I expect the euro pound to be sitting at this level for the short to medium term. Um, I'll be looking at tomorrow's pound and also what's likely to happen there before we give you a better picture of what could happen in the euro pound. If we look at the euro pound on a four hour chart, you know, it's been sitting quite at really at that level. It's quite a good range here. We see a, that level there. It's really been sitting at a support level. For it to break lower, I have to be very careful at that zone. Um, so I'm expecting it to bounce higher. I'm looking for triggers for it to go higher. Any further questions on the euro pound at the moment? No, everyone's happy so far? Does this consider as a head and shoulder pattern on the Louis asks, does this consider as a head and shoulder pattern? Wow, you're really testing me here. So Let's see, head and shoulder pattern. Let me just put in some boxes. So head and shoulder pattern, we have the head here. We have the shoulder here. We have the shoulder here. So it would, if I can move this line, it would need to go below this level before I would think um, of a possible head and shoulder pattern. A bit skewed, but a possible head and shoulder pattern on H4. Uh, but I'm looking at it, it needs to go more than a 200 pip downward move, breaking the 8635 level before a downward move. And that's a bit about 260 pip downward move. So, you know, this comes back to the chart patterns again, where if I'm going to wait for a 200 pip move downwards before I take a 200 pip profit, you know, I'll be looking at possible trades within that move or also how it can react upwards instead because I don't expect support levels to break. So yes, it is a bit of a head and shoulder pattern, but it's probably not something I'll be super keen on at this point. Fair enough. Awesome. So anyone else apart from Louis bombarding me questions? All right. Um, as a recap of what we spoke about yesterday for the Aussie, we have seen the Aussie move exactly as what we expected. You know, it's gone up along that red line that I drew yesterday. Um, we are one hour away from an RBA release. RBA release of the cash rates and also the statement. I don't know at this point, I don't know whether they're going to announce a QE or a possible QE or whether we, we still don't believe that they'll cut rates. So we're looking at possible QE to push the Aussie lower. But for the first leg, we have seen that it has moved up as we previously discussed. So one hour more, be careful of the Aussie. Remember, there's a the news coming up. Be careful of that. All right. So in the interest of keeping this very short and sharp, 20 minutes, I came in. I wanted to give you that quick update of what's going to, what could happen for the Euro-US. Uh, as a recap, you know, possible move upwards out of this range, upwards towards the 1.09 level good 60, 70 pip move with a 40, 50 pip tick stop loss. If it does break down, we have a 50, 60 pip stop loss with a good 100 pip tick profit. So maintain your flexibility, do shorter term trades for the euro over the next couple of days. 
All right. In the meantime, make sure you read the blog on Forex Trading Asia. Those of you in the private group at LCMS Traders Club private group, we have the recommendations. We have the watch list there. We have, we have the videos from yesterday that has been uploaded privately for you all. Do check out all the other resources that I've been putting up during this period when you're sitting at home trying to trade. If you have any questions, please reach out to me uh, with your questions. I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. If not, then I will also answer them during one of these next videos that I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. All right. So take care, trade safe for now, and I'll catch up with you all tomorrow again. See ya. Bye-bye.